Oh, oh it... <laughs> hey, who left this bowl of onions here? Mia's story has me crying and no! <laughs> Come back, Petri! I am Haru Ren. Welcome to my review of episode 21 of Bakugan Gen 3. So, spoiler warning, if you haven't seen this episode yet, come back and watch it now. But if you have, sit back, relax, and enjoy my review of episode 21 of Gen 3. The first part is the secrets, the lies. Mia is about to go to our final match in V's tournament. Oh, huh? It's from Jeff and Melissa. Good luck in the final brawl today, cousin Mia. You and Ventry got this! You're gonna win! Okay, why are you playing those messages right in front of your parents? And in other news, today marks huh? one month since the neutralizer was used on Bakugan. This TV was off in the last shop, and now it's magically turned on! Reports of disorderly brawling are at an all-time low. But still, some citizens are calling for even more restrictions. What? Whatever it takes! Does that not seem to you a little heartless? It's what's best to keep everyone safe. Ah, you really hate Bakugan, don't you? <clears throat> oh. This was a really important scene, actually. We see Mia in a struggle to contain her secrets still stand up against the rights abuse the Bakugan are facing, even though her parents are for the restrictions. This has causes her to snap because her mental capacity to keep up with her facade is finally starting to fall apart, causing her to be irrational. The mixture of pressure from the tournament finals, the fact her dad is involved in suppressing Bakugan, and the clear BS propaganda the news is spreading is really taking a mental toll on her. Mia. I'm so sorry you're dealing with this. My parents' support means so much. I don't want to keep hiding, but I don't know what to do. Ugh. One of the things I think this series did really well was the build-up to this story. Throughout the season, we are given very subtle hints about Mia's story to build up to this moment. We are constantly reminded through little scenes that Mia's family would never approve of her decisions and passion. The one episode where Mia's mom faints when she sees Mia in her streetwear, Mia always having to wear her normal outfit when she's at home, all of that is small subtle build up to convince us that Mia can't reveal who she really is and makes us feel very bad for her because she's stuck in an impossible situation. Tell her parents who she really is and be at peace with her mind, but risk being disowned, or keep hiding who she is to the brink of insanity to keep their approval. Not even two minutes into this episode and already it makes you incredibly invested. But Mia leaves her phone behind and her dad reads the messages that Jeff and Melissa sent her finding out about the Bakugan tournament. Oh, hi uncle! Jeff, Melissa, I'm looking for Mia. If you know anything, I need you to tell me now. You know, Frank Chung really pulls off the angry Asian dad bit really well here in this scene. Kinda reminds me of my dad actually. So it's the final match against Angus and Hale, and her dad is at the arena as well. Getting right down to the match, I like it. Though I kind of wonder how Mia still has not noticed her phone is gone. She's in trouble. She can handle it. Why do they have a frame where half of Dad's face is cut off? Zoom out, people. And I gotta say, this fight is amazing to watch, having so much hand-to-hand -hand combat and mixing it with the special attacks. There are moments where they cut to Mia and there are flames surrounding her, showing the symbolism of everything around her burning to the ground. Backslash hacked the field to change the bands to go to Hale instead of Ventry, which gives Angus an unfair advantage. Ladies and gentlemen, it appears the field has been hacked. The brawl will not be postponed. It'll just be more exciting. <laughs> This is where we really start to root for Mia and feel really bad for her. Everything in her life is starting to crumble around her. The stress and anxiety of having to keep her secret, the entire paranoia of it all, the constant propaganda about the Bakugan, and now she's about to lose the most important match of the Misfit Clan because the host is allowing cheating. We do get glimmers of hope in the middle with Mia's dad watching and being won over from her abilities, but she still completely finally breaks down. This is super emotionally investing, though I can't help but harp on the fact that Angus doesn't at all move in this fight. Then again, why would he have to move if the plan was to reroute Mia's bams? But even though Juno tries to work it, she can't figure it out, but Mia's dad comes in to save the day! A short range signal hidden within the network. Uh, show me! Okay, Juno just casually tossed her laptop. If you slow the video down, you can see the three still frames they used to animate it. And I'm not going to let my daughter lose. Aha! I found it! If I just delete this... That is the enter key. The field's BAMs go back to normal, and we get to see Mia's dad cheering for Mia. The BAMs are back to normal, and it's all thanks to your dad. He's here watching you. Mia, I believe in you. Don't give up. <laughs> I won't! <laughs> what? Would you get out of here? 
This is such a heartwarming moment that we waited for along with Mia. The chance for Mia to show what she really is capable of to her dad and winning his approval. This gives her the strength to get up and fight again. In one last special attack, Mia and Ventry beat Hale and they win the tournament for the Misfits. You know Angus's freakouts kind of remind me of this. I lost! I lost! Yeah! It looks like we have our tournament champions, the Misfit Clans, Mia and Ventry! Finally, this V tournament arc is over. And in the end of the tournament, Mia's dad comes out and talks to Mia in what was probably the most emotional and amazing scene we have gotten so far. And that you thought me and your mother hate Bakugan. We don't. Mia, I don't want you to have to hide who you truly are any longer. Dad, I, I, Dad, I wanted to tell you everything for so long. I dreamed about it, but I was so worried. Mia, I will always love you. I love you so much. Dad, Dad! <laughs> <laughs> hey! This brought some serious tears out. Rewatching this for the sake of this review, I can't stop crying whenever this comes up. I wouldn't be surprised if the writers brought a little bit of their own experiences into making this. This was absolutely incredible, and in my opinion, this scene's acting belongs to Kaya Konashiro. Almost really sounds like she's actually bursting into tears recording this in the booth. Frank Chung, while I think he did well conveying dad's emotions, there are parts where you can tell he's kind of struggling with the lip sync. Regardless, Mia had such an amazing character arc, and it was an absolute blast going through it. But wait! There's more! V appears and presents Mia and Ventry with the first place prize, which is a match against V and the returning Nilius. Yeah, they really pulled the I did say there were prizes, but not for you thing. I did say there would be prizes, young champion. I did not say... They were for you. And we move on to Sayonara Misfit Clan, where it starts off at the exact same place as we left off with before. The more things change, the more they stay annoying. What? I thought the prize was free corn dogs! No you didn't, Griffin! You thought the prize was turning the mod into a spaceship! An upgrade to the mod that turns it into a flying fortress! Only kids are able to pair with Bakugan! As long as I have this mask, pairing with a Bakugan is no trouble at all! You didn't have your mask when you broke into the Misfit mod though, yet you still brawled okay. But this exchange between V and the Misfits as well as Nilius was really well done. Everyone played their parts very well and you hear the similarities between V and Nilius. Both Ali Bacha and Alan Turner sound like they are playing off of each other to really give off the evil presence that both V and Nilius convey. Even though their dialogues are separate, it sounds like V and Nilius are the same person, the same evil that opposes the main heroes. It's actually pretty clever. So V wants Ventry, and even though Mia refuses since Bakugan are not prizes, V switches it up and says if he wins, then Ventry can make the choice. Sounds very sus, huh? But if the Misfits win, they get the Kokido drive back. Seriously, Drago should have just threw it to the ground and stomped on it when they had the chance. Like I said before. I was right. The rest were wrong. This Bakugan throw animation is literally reused from the template of dance throwing animation. But the fight gets underway, and actually this fight is really good. The animations look really great, the field they play on is V's own field design, and it's clear that he takes advantage of the familiarity, as well as the new bands that show up, which somehow makes Nilius do shadow clone jutsu. Some of the obstacles even require Mia to go through pain to get to the bam. There's this one obstacle where it's a pool of electricity. You fall in there, you die! Yeah, I got nothing. This looks amazing. Even though the Misfits hack the field to try and help Mia, Nilius overpowers Ventry in such stunning animations that look really great. Ventry, you have a decision to make. Huh? Sayonara, Misfit Clan. But Ventry chooses to go with V even though she said before that she would never choose to leave Mia. Clearly she has become infected with some kind of brainwash, but really the decision and cliffhanger at the end really makes you go... No! Wait! Come back! 
Man, Mia just can't catch a break, can she? She finally is able to admit to her parents who she really is, only for her to lose Ventry. Damn! So that was Bakugan Gen 3 Episode 21. Let me know what your rating of the show was in the comments down below. This was an absolutely phenomenal episode. The build up all season for Mia's character arc has led up to this. We see so much detail and amazing storytelling to really show Mia's mental state and eventual payoff that has become so emotional. The voice cast gave amazing performances, the animation was great to watch, and the ending really feels like another punch to the gut with Ventry all of a sudden leaving. Seriously, we just got a feel good moment of a lifetime with Mia being finally accepted by her parents and all of a sudden she loses Ventry. Talk about not catching a break. Almost seems like this was an emotional torment on Mia this whole episode. But regardless, this was an amazing episode that I do recommend going back to watch. So for the second time in these reviews, this has broken my rating system. This episode gets a 6 out of 5 Baku Spectacular. Three? Huh? Huh? Sayonara, Misfit Clan. Ventry, can't you see? I was blind, I'll do anything to change your mind. More than a friend, you're my partner. Too cool to forget, come back, cause we are family. So don't choose me and make me want to roam. And now my heart is beating like the saddest metronome. Somewhere I hope you're reading my latest three-word poem Ventry, come home